Okay, ladies, take a seat. Good morning, everyone. Great to see you here bright and early for the first and most dynamic session of the entire day. <laughs> We've got a fantastic lineup um, of speakers today, and I'm going to ask them uh, to introduce themselves one by one. And we can start down the end with Cassie. Hi, can you hear me? Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Casey Chan and I'm the um, APEC Strategy and Operations Lead for our Product Partnerships team at Google. I actually did a maths degree in Imperial College. Uh, proud to say I'm still being laughed at for being a maths graduate, but proud of it. <laughs> uh, probably, as you will see, a little far from a maths graduate, but go stand. Hi, good morning everybody. My name's Serene. I'm the uh, Managing Director of Oracle Singapore. I'm also a Vice President in for, uh, running the Cloud Platform team within Oracle. Cloud Platform means most of the cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whether it's in the, uh, all the codings or all the nice stuff, the AI and all this. Yeah? I studied computer science and I didn't want to disappoint my parents, so I continued to be continue in the computer science, although I didn't go on to coding. Yeah, but I decided to switch. The day when I came out of school and go into the IT, I knew I couldn't do coding somewhat because sitting behind computer get me migraine. So then, well, I knew I couldn't, I, I can't uh, disappoint my parents. So I told them, told my boss, can you let me try hybrid model? I start with half coding and half marketing. So and where I am now, that purely on the sales and marketing and running a business. Nice meeting all of you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessie Xia. Uh, so I'm currently the managing director for ThoughtWorks Southeast Asia. So in my current role, I'm responsible for uh, operations results and the business strategy and also the uh, new capability development for ThoughtWorks Singapore and Thailand. Um, so I've actually worked in a number of consulting and operations roles in my 13-year journey in this company. And uh, I have a very uh, wide range of interests. So one of the things I really enjoy learning every day. Uh, that's also the strong reason I joined ThoughtWorks, which uh, provides a perfect platform for me to continue develop myself and stretch myself. Hi, everyone. My name is Siu Chu So. I am the managing director of uh, the consumer bank uh, technology team in DBS. Um, we are the bank who wants you to live more bankless. Uh, my team is actually uh, in charge of all the uh, the apps that you use, uh, the PayLa, the in internet banking, and so on, um, as well as the big data technology for, for the bank. Um, I graduated with uh, computer science from uh, NUS uh, many, many years ago. Did uh, too much development coding uh, many, many years ago. I won't tell you how many years, um, but too much. Yeah, that's me. So we have amazing ladies ahead of me. So doing a very fabulous introduction. So n now, my heart is uh, pounding. Who is Elaine? I'm going to feel a bit stressed. But uh, anyway, good morning. My name is Elaine Liu. I'm a student. I'm a pianist. The only advanced keyboard I play in my life is the piano. <laughs> so there's <laughs> ne. <laughs> Um, the second part of me is I spent 30 years in the IT. The last couple of positions I filled were VP of SAP, Oracle, and the most recent is IBM Cloud COO. Uh, so that's my little background. And last but not least, I do a lot of uh, outside of corporate work. I'm currently board advisor to a couple of SMEs as well as the Indonesian Cloud Association in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Really looking forward to our discussion today. Um, and, and just by way of introduction, um, I run mentoring programs for young business women here in Singapore, and um, I'm really uh, passionate about the advancement of women. I know absolutely nothing about coding, and my first job, although my first job was with IBM, but it certainly wasn't in the tech space. So. Um, I'm just here to ask the questions and encourage um, some 
amazing responses from um, our, our panelists today. So I'm going to start off talking about um, STEM. So as technology advances and becomes available to all, and with more businesses and SMEs no longer seeing technology as a luxury, this is the best time to be in STEM. In Singapore in particular, there, there is a push for more women in STEM as it moves towards becoming a smart nation. And more women are being encouraged to pursue careers in this area to reap the benefits. So a question for Serene is, so with the three most uh, in-demand skills, being artificial intelligence, big data, and cloud computer being lost to organize, organizations overseas, and with a push by companies for local talent, there appears to be no better time for women to be in STEM. How can we both encourage and support more women in STEM? And what, what can organisations do to ensure they are, they are included, mm. developed and retained? Right. Very good question. Now, you, we all know technology will continue yeah, to challenge or to disrupt the global talent marketplace. And that will not go away. Yeah? And the question for us is, as a smart team, smart people like you here, how do we respond to changes? Yeah? And also individually as employees and also employers, companies, both we need to take a concerted effort. Yeah? We must put in effort as to how we deal with this. So in Oracle, so as a company, what Oracle does is we use uh, AI, we also use the things like the machine learning, we use analytics too to look at what are the future jobs, the relevant skills that the employees should go and continue to learn, yeah, to embrace the lifelong learning, so that will make all of us jobs relevant and that will kind of like, you know, future-proof the skills. Yeah. In Oracle, we are very fortunate. Uh, we empower employees to, you know, continue on the, those ground-out movements program like women leadership, which we call uh, OWL, OWA. Yeah, and my colleague would be happy to hear about this. OWA, we have OWL. Yeah. And we also have the other program called Oracle uh, Pride Employee Network. It's an open community. So we want to encourage uh, people from a different kind of background, different kind of challenges that they face in life to come together. So we are all being empowered to do that. And in Singapore, I must say we are quite fortunate because we, these environments are very diversified environment, and the inclusions are there as well. Yeah. Now, uh, for Oracle, we we do have a lot of women in the leadership position. So I must say that I'm fortunate to start off with. I'm here to represent Oracle as a country managing director to speak to you as a woman. Yeah. And if you visit our booth right behind. You will see many women there, yeah, that representing Oracle. So I must really thank you and kudos to all of them who are here on Saturday. And in, yeah, give them a wave at the back. Yeah, visit them. Make sure you get something from them. Thank you. And in for Singapore, beside me as a country MD and also a v VP for Cloud Platform, my my apps a business leader is also a woman. Yeah, and my. Southeast Asia, HR is also a woman. My, the, uh, my, in the engineer system, you think that something very hard, technical, is also run by a woman. Our digital prime new team, also run by a woman in the ASEAN and as well as in Singapore. Even the most technical part on, the, on our cloud platform is also run by the woman. So I'm very proud that we, have, we are surrounded by all the women around us. And this is where it would not be possible if the company are not giving us an equal opportunity, yeah? both in, in terms of promotion, appraisal, training, and all those. So that's something that I must say that we are very fortunate to be in Oracle. Yeah? And also continuously as a company, HR makes sure that we train all people about this unconscious bias. So when you hire, when you do appraisal, when you do a people management, you know what to do. Yeah, so that is also another thing that we do in Oracle. Thank you. Thank you so much, Serene. It's great to see so many women from Oracle here today as well. Thank you. Um, now, Jesse and Elaine, neither of you studied computer science. However, you've, re you've remained relevant in the tech world. So what career advice 
could you give some of the young women in the audience uh, who would like to move into technology? Do you see any link from your previous work to what you do today? And how did you make the transition? Okay, I'll, I'll go first. Um, is it working? Okay, um, I must be nervous then. Uh, too many questions, yeah? <laughs> I cannot remember all, but uh, I'll just start with the first, which is what makes me choose technology? Um, I was an economics and statistics money and finance graduate. My classmates were all going to the banks, were all going to the ministries, were all going to the Ministry of Statistics and all, and I was supposed to get a job also in one of the uh, area. And one day I woke up and I was trying to apply for jobs. And I said, hey, what is this IBM and what is this system sales? I said, what is systems? What is sales? I don't know, and I applied. And two weeks later, I got a call. It was a Saturday morning. Hello, Elaine. I said, yes. Oh, you applied this job. Oh, yes, I did. Do you think uh, we can have this time and have an interview? I said, certainly. And I put down the phone and said, um, so what am I going to do? I don't know what to prepare. So I went. I saw my, my boss then, right, which was the interviewer. He said, oh, money and finance. I said, yes, sir. Oh, you play the piano? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, you do cooking? Yes, sir. That's my hobby. Okay, you got the job. I said, why? <laughs> I said, why did I get a job? He said, you know what? We need diversity. So diversity happened 30 years ago, and I was the only woman selling hardware systems that I don't know what it is. There were cables, there were network, and I memorized every single part of the laptop, PCs, uh, hardware, mainframe, uh, by numbers. And at that time, IBM, remember, uh, remote controller, 5394, uh, dumb terminal, 3191. It, it got into me until 30 years, I remember in my head, right? Uh, but I was thankful to the manager, he said, because of diversity, uh, but that's not really true. That's because he said he loved to have his daughter playing piano and he didn't have a daughter. And I, I was like a daughter. I was thankful. Um, but by the way, for 30 years, I still keep contact with this uh, uh, man uh, that changed my life. Now, what keeps me going? Technology, there's no concept of old or new. Every day is new. Today you learn something, tomorrow you learn something, the next day you learn something. You are never too late. All right, so I got in thanks to the boss, then I realized that I need to learn. But I learned through the years, I realized that you are never too late because there's always new technology. So let me give you a few terms that are awful. Uh, Pascal, uh, COBOL, right? SQL, then Visual Basic, then C++, and then di da di da, then database has changed, and your Lotus, you got, then you got SharePoint. I'm just saying names. I still cannot code, all right? <laughs> I still cannot code. But I live with the kind of imagination that I can code, but I embrace the technology. So the most important is there's nothing too late. Technology is the baseline of all our lives now. There's no specialization, but they're pervasive. You embrace it now. That's an enabler, just like you learn music. It gives you certain creativity. You learn art, it gives you some flair. Learning coding, it is also giving you some thought process and, and an analytical mind. So that's the way to go. Believe me. You see, I'm still alive. <laughs> All right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I probably share some uh, bit different experience. So in my 22 years, uh, experience in the jobs, and uh, I actually did uh, quite a few job transition, not job transition, sorry, role transitions in the in the one company. Actually, I only work in three companies so far, but in uh, both the two companies, I had uh, quite a few times of role changes, and those changes actually are quite big. Um, but I just can, I mean, I mean, in my early career, I was a accountant. There are a few changes, but I want to only give a one example. Is a uh, I think about 10 years ago, I was uh, changing from the role, I was uh, actually head of people for ThoughtWorks China. So it's a company level management role. I was in the leadership team. 
and then I changed to a IT business analyst. Uh, so you probably couldn't believe the things trigger for that. It wasn't because I didn't perform well. It was because I, I was in the global leadership development program. And my leadership coach suggested me to make a big change, make big shift to unlock my growth potential. Otherwise, I'll only stay in this uh, human resources development, operational things, but not looking at other things. So it, it was a huge risk. As a, It was about, a, I had a 10 year experience already. It's kind of, uh, you can continue building your career in that area, and uh, you did pretty well already. Then you take a risk, you start something from almost zero. And uh, so it was very, very painful experience, but fortunately that wasn't the first time, so I did uh, some crazy things before that already. Uh, and uh, so it's a bit, very big risk and uh, was really painful in the first few months. But then when I look back, reflect on the things, uh, feeling like, uh, you know, if you, it, it actually create a lot of possibilities for the future. It was a good move. And uh, the other thing is when you really sign up that, and uh, I think I would uh, give a suggestion is uh, having a growth mindset. I think there's a book talking about this as well. So when you have already made a decision, so try to see more opportunities than blockers. I know you have a, probably have a lot of excuses to say, oh, I cannot do this. I don't have an education background in this, or I don't have a resources like that, or I don't have a good parents who can you know, support me, etc. Yeah, you do have a lot of excuses, but you have no choice. Just look at more opportunities than blockers. And uh, I think everyone already said this uh, lifelong learning for, for your whole life, and also um, never late to, to, to learn anything. You can learn technology, even in your previous 10 years, you didn't do technology at all, you could do it, yeah. Thank you, and what, what resonates with those answers with me is uh, a lot of women don't apply for jobs unless they can do you know, 60 to 80% of the work. You can apply for a job if you can only do 40% because most of the learning will be on the job, and I think we've just heard great examples of that, so don't be frightened to apply. Even if you don't know everything, you will never know everything. Um, Sue Chu, uh, as technology takes on new meaning and continues to disrupt and change the way we work and play, and I'm thinking here of Grab, um, Airbnb, um, Bitcoin, SpaceX, um, how can we best prepare ourselves for the fast-paced, ever-changing future? Thanks for the questions, Louise. Um, I think the key thing is actually uh, continuous learning. So the o people say change is constant, but actually change is accelerating. It's, it's not even constant. So what you know from school, you know, uh, X years ago, will, will be actually irrelevant now. So the only thing that will keep you, go, you know, relevant is actually continue to learn new things. So that, that is quite important. Uh, at, at DBS, uh, you know, we are in this uh, industry that is uh, facing the biggest di disruption of all time right now. Uh, you know, we are 50 years old. Um, we have a lot of new old technology, but we have a lot of disruptors with all the new technology. So we have big uh, program to, to reskill our people. Uh, whether it is a boot camp for people to learn how to write Python, you might be a COBOL developers. We, we still have COBOL de developers in the bank. We have COBOL, sy COBOL systems. Uh, but uh, we have a lot of other system in, in Spark, in, uh, in Java, and so on. Um, we have big uh, programs to, to retrain all our people. Uh, on the other hand, we also need our people to understand um, business. So we have a program called Back to School, where actually volunteer from the uh, business as well as IT. IT will teach IT, and business will attend, and the business will teach business, and IT will attend. So uh, you know, this kind of we call Back to School uh, happens all the time based on our voluntary uh, basis. And actually, finally, we also uh, have coding schools for, for anyone who wants to learn how to code. And you will find that actually we have uh, secretaries we have our head of business who actually attend coding schools to learn how to develop systems. So, you know, I think that learning mindset is, is very important. But as a company, we, we actually can provide all of this support, but uh, to, to us, uh, you have to own your own development, mm -hmm. right? So we also um, give self-service access subscription to Safari uh, with all the technical books and conferences we have, uh, you know, uh, various uh, credits to, to various uh, companies, uh, you know, certification program, um, Coursera, and so on. So learning is at your fingertips. I think the key point is that you have to own your own development uh, to be continued to be relevant. You must have uh, actually not just IQ, 
you, you have to have CQ. Mm. C stands for curiosity. So <laughs> you might, that, that is more important because IQ can be um, outdated. But if you have CQ, you continue to be relevant and get to know new things. And I would say finally, I, I would like to leave you with a, a quote from uh, this book uh, I, I read some time back. Uh, the, it's called uh, The Startup of You by uh, Reid Hoffman, the founder of uh, LinkedIn. Uh, he said that uh, you should always strive to be in permanent beta. You are always in a beta version. Mm. Yeah. So if you have that mindset, I think you, you will continue to be relevant. Fantastic. Could I, could I add to that? Uh, I resonate so much with everything that Suchi said. At Google, actually, we do have this big principle and mantra where it's launch and iterate, which I think a lot of you know. Um, I recently went on a, a women um, leadership program, and one of the things we really suffer from as women is the need to be perfect. So hands up here, who doesn't actually suffer from that? <laughs> so I see about maybe five hands, so the rest of us like really do. And it's a notion I shared, it's so important for us to remember the mantra of launch and iterate. We will never be perfect, never. <laughs> These amazing women here who worked for many years know that and they, they are saying yes to that. And the thing is to recognize that we don't have to be. And it's the mantra of constantly taking risks and being out there and then continuously learning and improving as we go along. And that is the one thing we should always be true to. Fantastic, that's great. <laughs> great advice. I'd just like to say I am perfect, but you know. <laughs> Some of us have to be. That's, my, that's, that's, my, that's, that's how I view the world anyway. <laughs> Okay, Serene, just a quick one for you. Um, you know, in light of Oracle's recently announced collaboration with Skills Future Singapore, what skills do you believe are essential to flourish in this new age and how can we acquire them? Yeah. All right. Um, we are very excited to have this opportunity to sign the MOU with uh, Skills Future Singapore, SSG in short, and it's to really help them to, to support the national agenda yeah, where as much as Singapore is progressing, and they also do not want to leave anyone behind. So you should take advantage of this uh, skill future framework, which is they cut across from the entire hiring all the way to appraisal and in your promotion and everything. So it's a very well thought of kind of a framework that developed by government. All right, in terms of the skills, yeah, you probably heard a lot of those things. So it back to, to me, four points. Yeah, First is on how do you becoming a uh, tech fluent? Like Elaine said that you must know Pascal, Kobo, but not necessarily you need to know how to do a coding. Yeah, but at least have some knowledge in that, right? Coding girls, that founder and code cited a very good example. Yeah, and from not studying com science, I went into setting out the website. Yeah, so code uh, coding twenty one or is a two one C. These are all the the non-profit organization that available out there today for you to take advantage of. Yeah. And the tech fluence is also not necessarily just not just to understand how technology works, but what it can deliver. What can you get out of this? Yeah. So if you are in business strategies, you need to understand how technology disrupt your business. What should be your new business model? Yeah, so having that mindset to look at the trend, look at what you need to do is important. And if you are in marketing, you need to understand that today, if you are doing a just pure event, and you may not be able to get as many customers. Yeah? Or if you do not have the total view of single view of your customer, you will lose the opportunity to do upsell, cross sells, and all those. So every technology apply to different uh, your different roles in a different way. Yeah? So it's not just to understand how technology works, it's really to understand how it can help you to deliver a good result from there. So that's the point number one, that how do you becoming a tech, a fluent in tech. Yeah. Second point is, uh, like we all say, is I know it, I, I'm being asked to just speed up huh, because there's a time. <laughs> we, when we don't see the notes, we have every time overrun. All right, so second point, so I constrain myself, only four points I want to talk about. Second one, we talk, Every one of us here agreed to embrace uh, the lifelong learning. Yeah? You should not stop. Keep learning. Yeah? And that's, that is the, uh, the important mantra that your principle in your life. Yeah? 
And the third one is also change is not a constant, change is an accelerator. Yeah? Change is also something, it take it become a norm. If you see some changes in your company, they restructure again, do you do this again? Do not grumble. Just accept it. Because every change gives you opportunity. Yeah? And that's the uh, third point. And the last point is definitely, I think, it's not just about tech skill. Honing or harnessing some unique human skills is very important. Right? This forum is a perfect place where you do networking. I have two girls, 19 and 17 years old. The 17 ones will always tell me, Mommy, I got no friends. <laughs> yeah? His friend is phone and love social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, or whatever, Snapchat. So, but networking is very important. Uh, and that is the skill that beyond just uh, IQ, CQ, curiosity, and the EQ part that's also very important. So that's to me the fourth one in here. Make time to network. Yeah? And that's something that I learned from Luis. If you have no time for, net for networking, you have no time for your own career. Yay, right. thank you. <laughs> um, which leads us to the next question. Thanks for bringing in the, the soft skill side, because um, I want to uh, open this up to Cassie, who we haven't really heard from enough yet. Um, so if you, if you look into your crystal ball, where do you believe the future <laughs> of work lies in the next five years? And what do you believe diversity, once typically referred to as gender only, will really mean in an AI world? We have a joke where um, I, I'm a strategy and operations person. By default, I do a lot of planning. And many of us want a five-year plan. And I kid you not, we actually say we can't predict five years. I can't predict five years. I mean, I work at Google, and I don't know what we're going to launch next. So you know what? I don't have a crystal ball. We do. Um, it's just so. It's just staying relevant. I honestly don't think we can predict where technology is going to go. And you know, you are the future generation, right? I would say stay true to ourselves and be curious and constantly be solving problems. That's what we do. That's what we philosophize on. Firstly, it's you know what is our what is the biggest challenge and and any of our users face in a country, and then. The diversity expert is really, really huge. Um, in Google, we practice um, actually product design um, for uh, inclusive product design. And also, we have um, AI principles that some of you may have come across, um, you know, all the way from top down, uh, which is very much about, you know, designing for everyone. Okay, now, a bit of education space here. When one of my favorite questions to ask people is, what do you mean by diversity? And a lot of times you get the, you know, gender. I think everyone knows the gender. but I can't cover all of it, I'm going to try. Okay, diversity for us means gender, ethnicity, um, culture, um, background, social economics, um, disability, uh, seniority. I'm sure I missed something. <laughs> so uh, the, the, the thing is, we all come from a different background, and as women, we come from different contexts, and that's so important in tomorrow's world. Jesse, would you like to add to anything? Into yeah, so just anything uh, to that. Add a little, as uh, they cover a lot already. Uh, but I just want to say, like we all know, like uh, artificial intelligence actually doing a lot of things, and in my in our lives already. But just keep in mind, those machines are very good at doing the to uh, handle the vast quality of data, and then they can find uh, the needles in the haystack. But the human are the ones to evaluate those needles and to decide what to do with them. And then so this really requires a lot of things like a human experience, common sense, and also your in emotional intelligence. And those things you can really develop, including the networking, right? Building relationship, a human relationship as well. So I guess just add to that. So besides learning technology, which uh, I think is a key thing, and uh, you can learn coding or you just know the technology. Actually, I mean, also in the afternoon, I heard that there's a lot of workshops and my colleagues also running workshop on technology and design thinking, human experience design as well. So learning those things, but also, uh, and then building up your soft skills, which you will succeed in the future as well. Yeah, just just to close that off, uh, we get out, we get out, jobs, we, we, we are successful at interviews because we have the technology or we have the, um, the knowledge. But what keeps our job is our ability to build relationships, um, to problem solve, to collaborate, to network, 
and uh, to really build those solid relationships within organisations. Otherwise, you can't negotiate, um, you can't influence effectively. So please don't ignore those, those very important soft skills. Um, we're about to come, come up with our last closing question and uh, I always like to end on a high note and to also um, look at actions that you can take to make sure that you remain relevant or become relevant in uh, the current work environment. So the question I'm posing for every, every one of the panellists is what is the one thing you did in your career that's prepared you for the future? So rather than the past, I would say what's in it for me in the future, right? There's no point saying in the past. Uh, I just came back from China and why? I spent some weeks at Tencent, WeChat and Alibaba. Why did I do that? I prepare myself for my future as an example. WeChat is a powerful platform. Alibaba is amazing, not just the T Mall, but the back end and the Suangxi, the festival. So even I, at this age, I'm a student. So I think it's very important you recognize what is important. You must like it. You cannot say it's important, but I don't like it, and then you're not doing it. You must have the preference, the interest, and build the strength. So I believe these three elements will help all of us to go a longer path ahead. Yeah, thank you. So for, for me, is, uh, I would say, the, you know, take risks. Always uh, be outside of a comfort zone. Don't do the same role for more than three years. I, I never do the same role. <laughs> Anytime I tell my boss if it's uh, three years, you, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to change to another role. Yeah. Um, so I just uh, remember a sentence uh, of an article I wrote a few years back, which is very relevant to this. Um, so I'm trying to remember the words. So a journey is characterized not only by happiness, struggles, and uh, achievement make it more memorable and meaningful. Um, so what is the key? Is to challenge yourself to keep moving out of your comfort zone. All right, very good. Mine is, I always thinking, how do I, or how do we be successful with zero talent? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So how do you do it? It's really how to get better at getting better. Right? So it's stretching your boundary, comfort zone, stretch the limit, and also be very focused. Yeah? Passionate and be very focused in what you're doing. Yeah, and that's how to really be successful with zero talent. Yeah. I share a lot of what the other women have said, but I would say actually surround yourself with supporting networks. Surround yourself with amazing people and constantly be encouraged. Thank you all very much. And I, that, that last comment absolutely resonates because I always talk about how do you create your board of directors? and. Uh, we give you that challenge. Who will be on your board of directors? Who will be mentoring you? Who will be sponsoring you internally? And who's going to support you because you'll need every single one of them to become who you want to be. So with that, I'd like to thank our fantastic panelists. Really wonderful working with all of you and learning from all of you. And uh, have a great day today. And um, just get out there and do whatever it is that makes you happy, that you're passionate about. And don't worry about what anyone else says about you because what other people think of you is none of your business. Yeah.